In this Figma series, throughout approximately 11 videos, I will show you everything you need to know to start using Figma. We will cover everything from the basics all the way up to more advanced techniques. So if you're interested in this, make sure to subscribe and also turn on your notifications so you will know exactly when the next video will come out. And if you're asking yourself why I started this year like this with this series is because whatever you're aspiring to be, a UX UI designer, a product designer, or even a solopreneur, you will need to know how to use a tool like a UI tool like Figma to create your own digital products. This is an essential skill that you need to have to start this journey. It's actually the first step. You can't imagine how many people ask me, where should I start if I want to become a UX UI designer? And the answer is here. Learn Figma or any UI tool. It can be Adobe XD or Sketch, it's up to you. But personally, I say that in this moment, in this time, Figma is one of the best UI tools that you can learn in order to future-proof your career for the next five to 10 years. And fair enough, I know that some of you are already proficient in Figma and you already know your ways around it. And you're at that God tier of design, of UI design. You're like among the God tiers. <laughs> but let's not forget about the aspiring designers who are just starting out. Let's give them a helping hand. And you never know, you might learn a thing or two as well. So the first thing we need to do is to actually set up Figma on your computer. You can use Figma on your browser as well, but personally I prefer to use the app. Plus it has like a couple of more features that I really like. So to set everything up, we need to go to figma.com and click here on get started. Here you're gonna be able to create an account. So either use your email or password to create an account or use your uh, Google credentials. I mean, that's what I did personally. And then afterwards, once you create an account, just head over to products downloads and here download the app for your specific operating system. So for my case, it's Mac OS, double click, install it and you're done. So after you open Figma, you're going to have this welcome screen, which can actually be split in two separate sections. So this section over here is where you manage your teams and projects. Just imagine this as a foldering system. So the team is the main folder underneath. You have all the projects. And inside those projects, you have the actual files. You're going to see that it will show exactly what you have in each project. So you're going to see the files that you have in that particular project or in that particular team. So if you want to create a project, you just go here where you have the team. You click on it and then you select new project and then you can create a new project. Once you have the new project, like I did now to prepare for this video, like for example, YouTube tutorials, then you can create the file. So you'll go inside, create a new file and then that's how you create the file. Also here you have the import file in case you want to import a specific file. And here on the right side, you have the sharing option that allows you to share this particular project. So let's start this by creating a new file. So when you open up your file, you're going to have three main sections. The top one over here, where you're going to have all your tools and also the sharing options here on the right side. Then you have the left one over here, which is for managing objects and layers. And then you have the right panel over here which is basically like a property panel. Like here is the place where you're going to change colors, text sizes, and so on. So anything that is related to design properties will be in this part here. And you'll see that this part will change depending on the layer that you have selected on your left panel. So if we start from the top over here, we can find the main menu, the move tool, the frames, which if you are familiar with Adobe products, they're like kind of like our boards. This is basically your screen all those objects that you will create will need to sit in a frame. So this is kind of like the main thing that you're going to use all the time. Then you have the shape tool, which you'll use the most, to be honest, because this is how you create your shapes and objects. Then afterwards, you have the pen tool, text tool, which is pretty straightforward, then resources. And here is where you're going to find your plugins, components and widgets. So if you click here, you're going to see that you're going to find the components plugins and widgets. We're going to go over this in a later video, but for now, just know where you can find it. Then you have the hand tool, which to be honest, nobody uses because we all use spacebar to do this. So in order to move your canvas on your screen, you just hit spacebar and then afterwards you can move your canvas or frame. But yeah, in case you want to use this, this is the hand tool and this basically allows you to change your artboards, canvas, frames, however you want to call it. They're exactly the same thing around your screen. And lastly, you have the comment tool, which basically this is a tool that allows users to comment on your designs. And as I mentioned previously, here on the right side, you actually have the sharing options to share uh, this particular file with, with someone. And then is this cool feature like start conversation. And it's really cool because it's like kind of like a Discord channel. 
where you can actually join and talk with the designers that are working on the same file as you. Okay, so now that we're familiar with the interface, let's create a button, but not any button. We're gonna create a glass morphism button, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. So the first thing you need to do, as I previously mentioned, is to create a frame. And then to do that, you go here to region tools, and then you select frame, or you can actually just click on your keyboard F and that will do exactly the same thing. That's a keyboard shortcut. And then I'm gonna go here on phones and I'm gonna select iPhone 13 mini, just for the purpose of this demonstration. Now what I'm gonna do is because glass morphism effect basically replicates the aspect of a frosted glass, I need to have a background so you can see how that glass looks because otherwise it's just gonna be transparent. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to head over here to the main menu, click on it, click file, and then afterwards place image. Once I click on place image, you can actually select the image that you want to place, click open, and then afterwards you can place the image on your canvas or your artboard. Obviously this will be huge, so I will zoom a bit out. Like zooming in and out, you can actually hold command and then afterwards use your mouse wheel, so that's how you zoom in and out. And then holding shift, I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller so it fits the frame that I'm planning to design on. So I'm just gonna make this a tad smaller and I'm gonna center this and that's it. Now I have the background. So now we can actually start designing the button. As you can see here, we already have a couple of layers on our layer panel. So here you can see the frame, which has this hashtag, and then afterwards you have the image. So if we want to change this, we can actually go here and change the name to, uh, for example, background image. So to change the name of the layer, you just double click on it and then afterwards you change the name. Okay, so now the next thing that we're gonna do is to create a rectangle. And again, the same thing as we did for frames. We're just gonna go here where we have our tools and then we can select a rectangle or we can just hit R on our keyboard and that will do exactly the same thing. We're gonna click on it and we're just gonna drop, drag and drop a rectangle on our frame. We're gonna zoom a bit in. We're gonna change this. Like now you see that once I created this rectangle, the properties here have changed. If I select on image, again, you'll see that the properties reflect the light layer that I selected. So make sure that after you create the rectangle, you have the rectangle selected. You can also rename this rectangle instead of rectangle one. And then we're gonna, making sure that again, we have the rectangle uh, selected, we're gonna go here to the property panel. So here on the right panel, we have a couple of sections. So this one is the alignment section. So here is where you're gonna find all the alignment options. So then this will align your object in your frame. Then afterwards you have the X and Y positioning, which to be honest, you're never gonna use. And then you have uh, the size, obviously the height and the width. Then afterwards you have an angle if you want to rotate your object. And then you have the radius in, in case you want to change the corner radius to 20 pixels or 10 pixels. All of these are in pixels, by the way. Then moving on, we have the constraints. Again, for now, just ignore these. We're gonna go over these in a later video. Then afterwards you have the layer, which is basically just a blending mode of how you wanna blend your object. To be honest, I don't really use this so often, but yeah, normally just leave it to normal and you're gonna be fine. Then afterwards you have the fill. Here is where you select the colors, or if you have, if you want to add multiple colors, you can actually do that. So you can actually add multiple layers on top if you want to create some interesting designs. Afterwards you have the stroke, which again, if you want to add a stroke, you just click here. You have all the properties if you want the stroke to be inside, center, outside. And from here you can actually define how big you want the stroke to be. Then afterwards you have effects. So here you're gonna find your drop shadows, layer blur, background blur, inner shadow. And then afterwards, lastly, you're gonna have the export options. And here is where you're gonna be able to select a specific uh, object or image and just export that image or object as you want. Okay, so continuing with our design for our button, we have created the, the rectangle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a fill. So we're gonna add the fill from here, sorry. And we're gonna make this white. 
And what we're gonna do, because we want to have that transparency to, you know, fake that kind of like glass look, we are gonna drop this to around 70%, I will say. And already that looks pretty interesting, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the height of the button to around, I will say, 55 pixels. The width doesn't need to be that wide, so we're gonna change this to, let's say, 150 for now. And then afterwards, we're gonna add the text to see if it's big enough. Then for strokes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add here instead of solid. So this you can do for both stroke and fill. So in case you don't want a solid color and you want, for example, a gradient, you have this option over here. So if you select, you can actually select a linear gradient. And here you can give a gradient to your stroke. So if for example, this, I click here to select the first color. I change this to white and the second one again i'm going to change that to white as well good you can already see a bit of effect so you can see here that here is white and it goes towards transparent on the right corner so this is how it looks okay now that we have that we have the drop shadow which we're going to change slightly so to change the prop the properties for the shadow you just click on this one you can change the blur to, I will say, 10 uh, pixels. And then afterwards, I will drop the opacity to around 10 as well. Also here, if you want to change the color of the shadow, you just click here, you select a different color, and that will change the color of the shadow. Okay, so now that we have kind of like our button, now the magic is, like in order to create that kind of like frosted effect, the only thing you need to do is to add background blur. And to do that, you go here to effects, and where you have the drop shadow, we're gonna add another effect. And instead of having it on selected on drop shadow, we're gonna have on background blur. And this will blur my background, giving it the kind of like that frost effect. If I want to change the properties again, I click on this icon over here. And instead of having the blur at 10, let's make it at around 4%. So you can still have like four pixels, I think. Yeah, it's in pixels. So you can actually see uh, the background behind a bit so you can distinguish the background. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a text and on this we're just gonna write something like start now and we're gonna add the layer on top. Now if you create this and if it goes underneath the button just make sure that the text is above the rectangle like on the layer panel because if it's underneath then obviously it will not show up. So just make sure that this is on top. So the way you do that is just click and drag and that's it. So nothing special over there. Let's make this text a bit smaller. So let's make it around 14 pixels. Let's drag this here. This button is a bit chunky. So I'm gonna slightly decrease the size. And this is it. This is how you create your button. Now, in order to actually have these layers together so they don't separate every single time I move something. I can go here and select both layers and click on group selection, or I can just hit Command G on my keyboard and that will do the exact same thing. So if you want to group these to be the button, I just hit Command G and then afterwards, this will create a group. Inside, I will have the layers that I grouped. And if I double click here, I can just rename this to button. And now we have our button. And I know this doesn't look super impressive, but let me show you the power of the button. So you have a button now and you have a background. You can actually create your first screen just using this and a bit of text. Click on the text, create a new text, just copy and paste something like join our adventure because why not? And put it here, just align it. Then create another text layer, add the lorem ipsum, change the properties of the text from here. Let's drop this to 14. Let's put this to light or even light is fine. And then afterwards, change the fill to white, put it underneath here. And you already see that with a bit of text and a button, we actually have our first layout. Now I can just move these a bit upwards and just have the button here. Maybe lower this opacity a bit just because I, it doesn't look too transparent to me. So maybe I will drop this to 50%, already starting looking a bit better. Just gonna add it here. And now, the only thing we need to do is to just, because the image is a bit too bright, 
we need to add a layer on top to just fade it out. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna select my rectangle, just gonna draw an entire rectangle of my, over my artboard. I'm just gonna put here like gradient. And I'm gonna move this to be above my image because that's the only thing I want to change. And I'm gonna go here to fill. I'm gonna click on fill. I'm gonna select linear because I want this to be a gradient. I'm gonna change this to black. Also this one to black as well. And that will make my image a bit darker. And I can just drag this until I feel satisfied with how the image looks. Also here, if this is too black, you can go back to linear, change this to probably because obviously we're in the desert, maybe we should change it to a dark brown, something like this. And that's it. And this is it. This is how easy it is to create your first design in Figma. And because we should never underestimate the power of a button, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.